Hello, I'm Brock Tice of CardioSolve. Last time I demonstrated how we could initiate a spiral wave, a monodomain spiral wave, in the CardioSolve Simulation Manager. Today I'm going to let that spiral wave run a little bit longer, and then I'm going to demonstrate some of the mapping capabilities of the interface for analyzing your data after a simulation has been run. So I've gone ahead and redone the simulation so that the spiral is centered, mostly for my own uh, comfort. But here you can see the initiation of a new central spiral wave. Follow the same method as before. You can see we're restarting here from uh, a checkpoint where I had paced the wave uh, that came across the tissue. And we've got a pretty good looking spiral wave there. Okay, well I want to let this settle for a few minutes. Not literally a few minutes, that would take a long time to run. Call this spiral settling. We'll use our simple mesh. Everything looks pretty good because it's been copied over from the previous simulation. I'm going to change checkpoints. There we go. So that's the end of our last simulation that I was just showing you. We'll let this settle for a thousand milliseconds. So I'll say 2350. Uh, I am not going to stimulate the tissue at this point. We're just going to let it settle. So I deleted the stimuli, or the single stimulus. And we're ready to go. Save the simulation. It warns us no stimuli have been set. That's fine. And we'll run it. There we go. The simulation is running. So we're letting our new spiral settle. I've refreshed the simulation. You can see it's 4.7% complete. Let's go ahead and see how the traces are looking. And we definitely have some new activations. The spiral is probably continuing. Can't see any reason why it wouldn't. We'll come back in a little bit and check again. Let's refresh and see how our simulation is doing. Okay, 22.8% complete. We check the traces. It appears that we have, again, a continuing spiral wave. We'll check back again in a few minutes. Our simulation is finished and the movie has been automatically generated. Let's take a look. So we can see our spiral wave from before. It appears to be settling down just fine. The tip is meandering a little bit, as you may be able to see. But it's staying centered. You might see some interesting things there once we do our maps. Okay, so we watched the video, we can see what the spiral looks like. Again, it uh, looks like we expect, it's stable. Now I'll generate a map of the simulation, actually several maps, to find out some things about what happened. Here's the maps panel in the results view. We have the choices of four different map types. Activation, which measures the times at which each node are activated. Repolarization, which measures the time of repolarization or recovery, and that's according to uh, a threshold set over here. Action potential duration, which measures the time between activation and repolarization. And finally, dominant frequency, which after a Fourier analysis of transmembrane potential gives us the dominant frequency in the plot of frequencies. These times are relative. So we want to go from the beginning of the simulation through at least one rotation of the spiral with a period of about 150 milliseconds. I'm going to do three to make sure we get all the repolarizations and APDs. 10 millisecond isochrones will give us nice banding on the plot instead of a smooth gradient in the spiral. 
and I'm going to leave the repolarization and time blocking as they are. We need to make sure to check activation, repolarization, and APD. Dominant frequency I'm going to leave for later. I'll run that over the entire simulation period. We click generate. We are notified that map generation has been initiated. If we refresh, we can see that the map is running. Let's refresh again. The map should be about done. Sure enough, here's the information on our maps. We have the three types that I clicked. Activation map. This shows us activation from early, which is blue, through late, which is in this case green, and there's a, a little bit of delayed activation in red there from the tip following different trajectories on each rotation. Depolarization maps. Looks like there are perhaps some artifacts here from the repolarization threshold. If I tweaked it, it might get rid of those. But you can see that repolarization basically follows depolarization or activation. And finally, action potential durations. This is typical of an action potential duration map. You'll see this sort of noisy appearance because of the different activation patterns in the tissue and memory. The upshot is most of these are, it looks like, around 70 milliseconds. So normally this APD would be longer, but it's been driven down by the continuous activation of the spiral. And these are APDs for 70 millivolt recovery, which is probably about an 80 or so percent APD. For each of these, you can download the actual text files, the map data. So if you want to do some post-processing on your computer, you can load up these data and look at them that way. Now I'll generate a dominant frequency map. I'm going to run this the entire duration of the simulation. No isochrones for this and time blocking I will increase to make it more efficient. This, What this does is set how many time steps are read in and processed by the mapping program at once. You can always leave it at the default, it'll work fine, but sometimes it's desirable to tweak it and so we give you the option here. So I have dominant frequency checked, going from the start to the end of this simulation relative time, not bothering with isochrones. They're not output for dominant frequency maps anyhow, because they don't make any sense. And repolarization also doesn't matter. But we'll go ahead and generate. We're given a message that map generation has begun. This map will take a little bit longer than the last one because it has to read through the entire time series and perform some mathematical calculations. If we refresh, we're told that the map is running. I've refreshed, and now the dominant frequency map is available. If we click to show it, you can see that the dominant frequency is uniform throughout the tissue. This is probably because this is a spiral wave, and so every point in the tissue is being activated at approximately the period of the spiral wave, every rotation and results in a uniform frequency, dominant frequency. If, for example, there were an obstacle or a region of different conduction velocity or action potential duration, substantially different action potential duration, you might expect to see some difference in dominant frequency. This is typically used to look at things like increased activation and wave break near an obstacle with an infarcted heart or something like that. And again, you can download the actual map data if you'd like to look at the numbers or post-process them. So I've shown you how easy it is to create activation, repolarization, action potential duration, and dominant frequency maps using the CardiSolve Simulation Manager, in this case for a spiral wave. If you have any questions about this demo, or other questions about the software or the company, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.